Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Westwood, and I'm here with Editor-in-Chief Hugo Gardin. And Hugo, obviously the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse really captivated attention over these past few weeks. And you write in your column this week about how the left has been really almost salivating at a guilty verdict in this trial. Why do you think Democrats are so invested in a conviction? Well, it will serve the narrative that they have been pushing on the country for the last two years or more. Um, Kyle Rittenhouse has been depicted by the left, both by uh, the elected left, Democrats in Congress, and by the grassroots and across Twitter, etc., as a white supremacist. You know, he turned up in Kenosha, he had an AR-15, he, uh, he sort of fit the bill visually for them. And uh, if they can get, if there is a conviction in this trial, it will, uh, as I say in the column, keep aloft this sort of creaking dirigible of this idea that, that uh, white supremacy and white supremacism is a, is, is a sort of serious threat to the, the country. Obviously, there are white supremacists, they're uh, horribly unpleasant people, and individually they're dangerous, but they do not pose a threat to the country. But that isn't the, le the, the story that the left wants to present. They want to suggest that somehow uh, it is the, an, an extreme right-wing element that is uh, the, the, the greatest threat to the United States, and, 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 and that is something which I think is very hard to sustain. However, a, 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 a guilty uh, verdict in this case would help that along. What do you think of the media coverage of the trial so far? Do you think it's served the public interest or potentially contributed to this perception that justice is not going to get served? Oh, it's been very, it's, it, it, a lot of it has been extremely poor. I mean, it was very interesting uh, during the course of the trial um, where people were sort of, sort of expressing surprise to find that the uh, victims who were killed by Kyle Rittenhouse, who were shot by Kyle Rittenhouse, were white. Uh, there is a, there is this, uh, fellow who was 17 at the time, now 18, who shot two other people in the Black Lives Matter protest, uh, they were not black people. So that, that for some reason was something that despite the enormous coverage of this case, uh, people were unaware of because that fact that it was not a, 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 the shooting by a white person of a black person or of black people has somehow not managed to bubble to the surface, which shows that the coverage was sort of very odd. There was another thing which was really extraordinary actually during the course of the trial, and that is that the, the, the one witness who had been shot but who had not been killed um, conceded that he was only shot by Rittenhouse after he himself had charged at Rittenhouse pointing a pistol at him. That is, you know, that was, that was not, that was left out of many reports. The reports were talking about that witness fearing for his life because Rittenhouse had the rifle. And amazingly, even though the case really could hinge on whether or not, or it does hinge on the idea of self-defense, and therefore could hinge on the idea of Rittenhouse shooting this fellow only after he had himself had pointed a gun at Rittenhouse, somehow that didn't make it into the story. So there have been, into many stories, so there have been a lot of uh, examples where this, uh, this story has been written about tendentiously by the media in the way that they have written about many stories tendentiously. And finally, in your column, you also write about how Democrats seem more invested in outcomes than in process, and that extends beyond just the way this trial was conducted, but also to their views on things like the Supreme Court, on elections. Yeah, yeah. Explain why you think that's potentially dangerous. Yeah, I think that this is actually the one of the, the most telling and most important thing. I mean, even if you sort of set aside the fate of, uh, you know, uh, of a teenager and, and of the people who were shot, et cetera, the bigger picture is of Democrats being far more concerned with the outcome of a particular, of, of a legal question uh, than with the, the, the process. Uh, Representative Cory Bush of Missouri you know, tweeted um, that if Kyle Rittenhouse got off, if he was acquitted, it would encourage uh, uh, white supremacists to believe that they could get away with things. And she, she tweeted that, uh, and she connected this with the Michael Brown uh, killing seven years ago. She described him completely erroneously as being murdered. It was found that, in fact, he was a thug who had robbed a store, and when a policeman tried to intervene, he had charged the policeman, tried to wrestle the policeman's gun from him, and been shot in the process. 
that incident was the foundation, the fictional foundation of the, uh, uh, for the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, all of this was put out into a tweet uh, falsely by uh, Representative Cory Bush. Uh, Representative Hakeem Jeffries uh, tweeted that uh, Kyle Rittenhouse should be uh, locked up and the three key thrown away. This was before the case had even been presented. So what the Democrats wanted was the result. They just wanted a conviction. And the reason that I connect this with the whole process of, uh, with the Supreme Court is that it used to be when the Democrats would oppose a nominee by a Republican president that they would say what we need is somebody who would, um, believed in the living constitution rather than being a textualist or, or an originalist. They don't bother with that anymore. They don't, there's no theoretical explanation or justification for opposing someone who's entirely competent. They simply say, oh, well, he's more likely to uh, oppose the legislation or the, the things that we want to do in Congress. They basically want the outcome, and they actually don't care anymore. They don't bother explaining anymore the thing from the, 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 the question of procedure. One of the things that people should remember is that democracy itself is a procedure. You can get left-wing policy, you can get right-wing policy out of democracy, but democracy is the way that you come to your conclusions, the way that you govern yourself. And so I think one of the things about the Rittenhouse trial is it's been very um, it demonstrative of a problem that has now beset the country because the Democrats have given up on the idea of procedure, they just want the results, and they're going to push for them as hard as they possibly can. Well, Hugo, thank you so much thank for you. being here today. You can get more writing from Hugo and the rest of the commentary team at WashingtonExaminer.com.